Uh, welcome to Houston Mashup. I'm Anna Christelle. I also write under another pen name. My spicier side is Isabella Cole. Uh, we're talking about character development, and I've been told that that's my strongest um, attribute as an author. I've been told that by my publisher and by my readers. Don't ask me how I do that. <laughs> um, basically, I put myself in the head of the character that I'm writing, and I give as much information as I can about that character throughout the book. Other than that, it just falls into place. Um, as far as plotting, I make an outline. I make an out. Okay. I make an outline, and it's. I don't always follow it, but I start out with it. Uh, now I'm going to turn the floor over to Anne and let her tell you what she does, and then we're going to let you ask questions. Okay, hello? All right. Um, I'm Anne Conley. I live in a small town with enormous characters. Uh, stereotypes work, seriously. Um, I also have a spicier side, Aurora Love. <laughs> I wasn't really going to talk about, but um, I've also been told that my stories are very character driven. I also use an outline. I'm not a pantser. I cannot make stuff up off the top of my head and have it come out making any kind of sense whatsoever. So I have to have an outline. Um, but in my writing and my character development, I use real people. I'm not going to lie. I, my people that I know are all over my books. They're in there. The real people, real experience. I change stuff up, but reality is so much more fun than fiction, <laughs> if you think about it. And um, that's that's what I do in a nutshell. So, questions? <laughs> so pretty much, we do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, and I'm from a small town, also. And I write about places where I've lived. Anybody has any questions? We're going to open the floor for questions. Because that's what I was told this was about, a Q&A. Awesome. Hey. <laughs> um, so I, um, I'm obviously friends with y'all on Facebook. Um, and I've noticed that there are a lot of authors out there that utilize these books. And I really wish I had the title of them, but they're like the th thesaurus of a... Um, like a, what's the word, like a, how to develop a character. Like, and there's three books, there's these three little books, and they're called the Bibles. Have y'all heard of them? I have not. I mean, I don't have the exact name of them. I don't know if there's other authors here that know what I'm talking about, but it's like the writer's guide to, um, to describing a character, to describing... I've not heard of that. Okay. I have not heard of that either. I have in the past used plotting guides sure. for character development and stuff like that, but I, I don't stick to those. They're way more detailed than I tend to go whenever I plot out my stuff. I like the vague generalizations that sure. I can, my characters can kind of take their own. So it's a two-part question. Okay, awesome. So since you don't use them, which was what I originally thought that you would say, because a lot of people, you know, they, they have their own imagination. Do you find that you typically feel like even though other, even though your readers say, oh, I love this, I love this particular um, character, yada, yada, that you're sitting there going, but that character was in my last book. Like, do you, do you feel like you replicate the same characters over and over again? And then you're like, what do you mean you, you like that when it's so much like my last character that I wrote about? Yeah. I, I, I do that. Um, well, I write in series. Most of my books are a series. Sure. So it is the same characters. But. I'm only saying that because my latest heroine, I feel like I described her exactly the same as my last series. And people are like, I love her. She's so wonderful. And it's like, well, maybe it's because she's kind of like the last one. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's... <laughs> The thing that I think about characters that makes them interesting is is when you're developing a character to write about, you give them a life. You give right. them things that they do, the uh, hobbies and favorites and all that. And you make that different for right. each character, obviously. And, and even though it may be the same stock character, 
Yeah. Which, you know, a hero is a hero is a hero. They have different flaws. They sure. have different idiosyncrasies. But okay. It would take a a very astute reader to find the differences. Okay. So are you all first person or third? I'm third. Third. Okay. third. I think that's probably what my problem is, is that I write first person, so my voice sounds the same. I, you know, that's probably what my problem is, is that because I don't write third person, that my voice sounds the same, and that's why my, my character probably sounds, you know. And I don't know, have you, have you ever tried first person? Can, is it easy to flip over to do it? I think it is. But you do? Yeah, I, my uh, erotica is first person. Okay. But I, I don't promote her a whole lot. She's just kind of for fun. Um, but Anne writes in third person. The okay. only book that I start, ever started writing in first person was a true story. Okay. Uh, and it's not been finished because the story isn't finished. My husband has terminal cancer and I started writing a story about our journey with cancer sure. and it's not finished, but it is written in the first person. Okay. Um, my first book ever, which became a bestseller, was based on a true story. It was based on um, my lifelong friendship with a group of girls. Uh, we became friends in first grade and we are now in our 50s and we are still That's friends cool. and we still get together and we still go on trips together and we're always there for each other. We all have our own lives, but if someone through the years, like th we had uh, one girl had a child that died, another girl went through a divorce, another girl had a spouse that died. Um, through all that, we're always there for each other, sure. and that's the basis of my first book. It was turned down by several publishers because they said nobody <coughs> wants another book about a women's friendship. When it was picked up by Lazy Day Publishing, it became a bestseller, and most of the reviews said, I love this book because of the friendship between the women. It's a romance, but the basis of the book was the friendship of the women. And so I And that was third person. That was third person. Was, and it, that wasn't I, hard to write at all? I, even I, from I your character? I, it's hard for me to even consider writing in first person. Okay. Because it's um, it's hard for me to now, even I put consider it, writing I used third one person. point of view. I used one one character was the main character's point of view and the story was told from her point of view, but it was written in third person. Okay. Um, yeah, first person that wouldn't come easy for me. Now, I know some people, like you said, third person wouldn't come easy for you. I'm thinking about taking a, a, a course yeah, first and person have, the, have it only be where I write third person so mm -hmm. that I can sort of get my mind. Get a feel for it. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like riding a bike. You have to keep practicing in your brain and keep, you know, he and she and all that. But for now, it's like I just can't. I you have, have to decide if you're going to do third person omniscient or third person limited. Or, and third person limited is what's pop prevalent in romance writing. Third person omniscient is more suspense and, and uh, mystery type stuff. And it's really difficult to pull off. It's, I, I find, it's very difficult to write in. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, to me, I, I've always been a storyteller. Right. And, but I'm always thinking in my mind, the he, she, you know, I don't think of it as I. And I guess it's just a difference in what, you know, what runs through, what how your well, mind works. Well, for me, it's like, um, like I was telling my kids yesterday, when when I'm, I'm in a book, it's like, you know, my, and I, I was like, I don't mean to be mean or anything, but um, my husband and my children don't exist anymore to me. I am now that person. I am now that living that life. And for three weeks, that's all I am. I dream them. They talk to me. I mean, you know, you know what it's like. It's like we're we're crazy. <laughs> we're like yet they still things. want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to have my diet coke and my whatchamacallits and everything right next to me. But yeah, I mean, if it takes about an hour for me to come back to reality and say, oh, I ha I'm married and I have children, you know. Because in my book, she's total, you know, jerk and wants to sleep around with every, you know, you know, so it's, it's very different. I Try have to become a full-time job and having to concentrate on that all day. I mean, that, when when yeah. all your, all, the only thing that's running into your mind is what, what am I going to write the next chapter when I get home tonight? Yeah, I've been very lucky. I mean, my husband is, I've been very, very lucky. I, I know I'm blessed. 
to be doing this. So that I've been able to push out as many books as I have. But thank you. Yes, Yay! Sorry. We have to use the mic now, guys. Yeah, this air is really loud. Uh, I'm K.S. Haywood. Uh, I write paranormal suspense, romance, and I was just going to add on to that. Um, I'm completely different from you ladies. Um, I am a 100% pantster all the way. I don't plot anything. I sit down at the computer and the words come out. Uh, I, I write in first person and third person. Um, my Eternal series is written in completely third person. Um, the book one of the Save My Soul series is written completely in first person, but book two and book three are written in first person and third person. I write from the main character's point of view in first person, and then whenever it's vital for, um, for the reader to know about other things that are going on, I write from third person from all the other characters. And um, it just it just works for me. I, I, I love doing that. I love writing in first person and third person more than just strictly sticking to a third person point of view story. Um, I'm actually writing two series, or two books right now at the same time. One is written completely in third person and one is written in first and third. So, so how much I mean, time in between do you have to like take your brain and just flip it over? Because that's like using two, I mean. I, I love it. I, I mean, I, I love putting myself, I, I guess first person is my favorite, but I love adding to the story with the third person. Sure. You do it effectively too. I read one of your stories in the anthology. I think did you do that in that in that yes. story with the first person and third person? It's yes. very effective. It gets it's it sets it separates the tone of the different points of view of the characters, and I like I like that. That that's the prequel to my new series, and that I'm writing book one and it right now, and I'm doing it the same way. But the same my soul series is written like that. Um, book one is written completely in first person, and I had no intentions of continuing on, but some yeah. people thought that I needed to so um, but whenever I started writing uh, Hell's Gift book two in that series and, and I at that time I'd never I'd never read another book that was that was like I wanted to do it you know I started out from from in first person from the main character's point of view but then whenever I got to chapter two I was like I need, I need the reader to, to know what these other characters are doing, but I can't do it in first person because my main character's in first person and he's in hell, but they're in heaven. So how the hell am I gonna do that? <laughs> so I just did, I mean, I just started chapter two in third person from their point of view, uh, but you know, it, it just worked. And I was, you know, it, it just flows easily for me. And I, and I don't get confused whenever I'm writing and going from one chapter that's first person to other characters that are third person, you know, from I to he said, she said. It doesn't, it doesn't confuse me. I mean, it just, like I said, I'm 100% panster. I sit down and, and the words just come out. I don't even think that I'm doing it. I'm just like a shell. And my voice is in my head. They're like, hey, just sit back and let us do this. So, I mean, that's, that's just me. Well, when I said I have an outline, I don't always follow that. No. I No, and Anne, my assistant, can attest to this. I have changed books in midstream and threw her way off base when she beta reads for me. I start out with an outline, but I'm like you. When I start writing, the words just come out, and sometimes they don't follow that outline at all. But the outline just sort of gets me started. And as far as the first and third person, I think that's just a personal uh, thing. Now, I know Vicki writes in first person. And I do, but then I also alternate point of views uh, with every chapter. And mm -hmm. then when I use third person, it's more if it's a remembering or if they're going back and I apologize those. And that, so I do have a little bit of third person, but it's not very much, and it's very intermittent. 
So I think it's just a personal, that's just a personal thing between authors. Um, I guess most of the, I was always an avid reader and most of the books that I read all through the years were written in third person and I guess that's why when I decided to start writing, third person is what made sense to me. But um, like I said, I think that's just a, a personal thing with each author, which they prefer, which is which comes easier for you. If I try to plot, if I try to outline or anything, my kids, they go on strike. They're just like, seeing if I don't, I'm going on strike. Not, They're like, what are we supposed to do now? <laughs> yeah. What else? Anybody else have questions? Oh, yes. You, back row. Oh, sweet. Hi. Um, my name is Mary Elizabeth. I am the author of uh, Dusty. Um, really yes, he's my son's name, by the way. Oh. <laughs> um, in the book, it, this is going to refer to the small towns. Um, it, t it takes place in a small town in Oregon, and um, obviously I've never been there. I did, you know, normal research on the internet, and I asked, I went on Facebook and asked if anybody lived there, and so I got some help that way. But I think with fiction, you obviously take liberties, and there were some that... I, we took a lot of liberties with this town, and um, it was even something I went over with my editor, like, is it okay if, if we put a building here that's not there? Like at the beach, we added a marina that's not really there. And, I mean, this was only one review, but it really kind of, like, got to me, because she was like, how dare you disrespect my town, because you don't know nothing about it? So, I mean, how is it okay with liberties that you take and things like that when it comes to a small town? She was like, obviously you've never been here, and blah, 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 I was like, okay. That may be why I write about only about places I've been to or I lived in. You have? <laughs> I, every, all of my books, are, they either take place in a place that I have lived in or I have family that lives there or I have visited and I do extensive research online to find restaurants, hotels. I use real yeah. things. I just um, figured it would be easier to write about a small town just so you can take certain liberties with it. I mean, I guess you could make, if you made up the name of the town and just made up the town, it would probably be okay. But, uh, and I'm not saying it's not okay. I'm just saying where you just happen, what are the chances you would have a reader that was from that town? Yeah, we actually had a couple. But yeah. She was and you the just, only one that was kind of mad. But. You just so happened to have a reader <laughs> that took offense to that. Yeah. Um, but I do, I do extensive research yeah. on the town. I live in Palestine, Texas, and it's about 17,000 people. It's 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 not a small town, but it's certainly not a big town. It's not a city. Um, and I initially started writing stories set in Palestine. But I realized that there was always going to be somebody like that that was like, you're on crack. That didn't happen. That's like, that's just, it's, blah. So I decided to change the name of the town and made it up. It's serendipity. That, I just made up the name of the town. It's totally Palestine, but you know, the, 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 the town is called Serendipity in the books. Um, and I just, I played on, on cliches. I love cliches. They're my best friend. I yeah. try to make them a little bit different so that they're not completely roll your eyes. Yeah. But it's stereotypes are real. They're based on reality. High school football is huge. And um, that's a big part of small town life. So is yeah. the drunk guy that hangs out at the pit stop. You know, it's just the newspapers are so opinionated, it's not even funny, and they get away with it because it's a small town. But those are all stereotypes and cliches that I use. Yeah. And um, because once I realized where I was going with the stories, I was like, well, I don't want people from Palestine to know that. So I just changed the name. And, and I thought about changing the name too, like just like making it up. Uh, I, I don't know. I think, I, I, I'm not that smart. I can't think of. And I have a town that I've never been to. Um, I usually don't touch on anything that y'all like. So I, I had Las Vegas in my last book. I've never been to Las Vegas. Um, 
I know. I know. I, I so need to go. And I've been playing it. I know. I know. Everyone's going to go to Vegas. But, um. I was playing for my sister's birthday, but I'm going to go to New Orleans instead. Most of my setting is like in a mansion. And uh, there's some other things that, um, that are happening. I know that there's a Caesars Palace there, and that's it, a casino, and that most casinos look alike. So I just, I mean, I talk about the, I talk about the stairwell and a room, and I mean, I don't really go into great detail. I leave that up to the reader. Uh, you know, I just touch and give them a little bit of a push so they can use their own imagination. But I don't, I don't necessarily name things that I'm, that's in a certain town that I'm not going to be able, that I've never seen before, that I'm not going to be able to back up if someone jumps on me and says, hey, you've never been here. You, you can't write stuff like that. Well, you have to take into account, too, that there are idiots everywhere. I grew up in Houston. I grew up. And they're going to leave reviews. I grew up in Houston. Um, I lived here for 19 years of my life. I wrote a book about Houston, and I published it. And some uh, reader did that to me. It was like, you can't ride a bicycle from Montrose to Rice Village. You can't do this. You can't. There's no titty bars that are zoned to show nudity in Houston. And I'm like, okay. Well, I, I didn't know that earlier on when it's I was fiction. People. Exactly. It, it, so it's I mean, fiction. I went back and changed the name to the city, you know, because I didn't want to deal with that. I was like, that's just. Ugh. But there, there are. There's people everywhere that know more than you do, and they're gonna be sure to point it out and fuck them. <laughs> okay, my last book. <laughs> my last book was a BDSM book. I had a guy I went to high school with sent me a message on Facebook and asked me how long I've been into BDSM. And he said, if you want to interview someone for your next book, here's my phone number. <laughs> that seriously happened, okay? There is not so, and it's like, I'm like, what part of I write fiction do you not understand? In the a writer does. In the in the beginning of each book, there is this uh, little paragraph that says the story contained within this book is a work of fiction. Names and characters are the product of the author's imagination, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. They forget so, to read them. Suck it. Or don't. Any other questions? Can you just say fuck them again? Fuck them. <laughs> I love that part. That was the best. part of the whole thing. Dina's going to edit that part out. Oh, no, right. she's not. I was here. I knew what happened. Add that my assistant Ann has given me material on the 15 hour road trip here for my next four books. Wow. <laughs> Try going on a road trip with this lady. Wow, that's pretty good. Hmm. Hey, no more questions? No more questions? Oh. Thank you, lady. Who's your favorite character? Who's your favorite character? Favorite character? Yeah, out of all your books. Who's your favorite character? Definitely Lily and Remember Our Promise. Okay. Rachel from Hot Mess. All right, thank you. I just wanted to know. <laughs> we have swag up here if anybody wants any. Postcards and bracelets and thingies. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Burn them if you got them, get a drink, get a snack, and we'll be back shortly. Hey, Anne. Anna, do we have all the info?